One thing that I often get asked, how do you afford all the stuff that you have? Budgeting. When my first job, I had to clean up dirty tampons and people's dirty pooped in underwear. I had to clean that stuff up myself. When you have something that you wanna achieve, you have to go after it. So if you wanna upgrade your studio equipment, if you wanna get new stuff, record better songs, stick around. <laughs> finances. I think this is one of the least talked about topics in our community. And instead of just always going on about the music production side, how to make beats and how to record these vocals. Today, I wanna to talk a little bit about budgeting, the boring side of the music making process, but the side that's going to affect your future in the long run. That was a fail. One of the biggest misconceptions I see on my channel is people think that number one, that I'm young enough that my parents still buy stuff for me. Number two, I just have money laying around. I have unlimited cash flow and I can go buy all this stuff. The honest truth is I'm in debt. And how did I get this debt? Well, credit cards. See, but the thing is, I know how to manage my cards. And I say this because I love electronics very much. Gadgets, gizmos, shiny new toys. That's why I have my entire studio setup that I have with all the equipment that I have because I love to buy new things and play with new things. One of my biggest weaknesses in life is gadgets. Aside from women, kind of close. See, but the thing is, as a musician who's trying to better their sound, to better their craft, get new stuff to kind of improve their overall creation, we have to think about the money that we're putting out versus the money that we're getting in. And this, I think, is something that a lot of people don't pay attention to. I think a lot of people are going out, they're turning up, they're buying bottles, they're spending on sneakers, they're buying new clothes, things like that, stuff that doesn't really affect their music career. And then they complain how their music doesn't sound too great and they don't have enough money Money to do this or go there or buy the newest mic or anything like that you have to budget and you have to spend your money wisely you have to buy the things that are vital to your career at least until you get to the point where you can spend money freely that's where the inspiration of this video comes from and let me show you you guys may have seen my iPad Pro music production video in which I showed off a really shiny great brand new iPad Pro 11 inch. It's it's really useful, it's really great. But in me owning this for about 30 days, I realized how often am I, am I gonna use this iPad Pro? And the answer to that was not often enough. You don't wanna go spending money on a bunch of new gear, a bunch of new stuff that you don't necessarily need just because you want to have it. You, sometimes you just gotta put off those needs and just wait until it's time and whenever you have the money to be able to do that stuff. I was talking about credit cards earlier. I used a credit card to buy this iPad Pro. All this stuff you guys see here, I would say 80% of this was purchased with a credit card. An iPad Pro is not really going to be something that is vital to my music production and furthering of my music career at the, at the time now. So basically I'm saying all this to say, well, first of all, this window is really dusty. I'm saying all this to say, you have to be smart with your spending. You have to be thoughtful about what you're spending your money on. You can't just go out and buy everything that you wanna buy. You have to think, am I gonna use this every day, number one? Is this what I'm investing in going to return my money back to me? So for instance, I bought this camera and already I've made my money back with it. So it was a good investment. With an iPad, I can't really see that happening. You gotta think about these things. And if it doesn't serve either of those two purposes, you need to go return it or you need to not buy it in the first place. I'm gonna have to say goodbye to the iPad Pro because I really wanna get that money back on my Best Buy account. And um, it's a different type of video. It's me talking about that side of the music production game. So, and there we go. <sighs> I get attached to my electronics. They're like my kids. Since I don't have a wife, I don't have kids. These are, electronics are my babies, basically. My camera, my iPad, my laptop. I take good care of my stuff. So it's hard to see this thing go. It's, it's, it's very hard. <laughs> you can afford that's going to 
push your music career, that's okay. Go ahead and buy it. Only buy things that are going to be great on returning your investments. Your payment history, your payments need to always be on time with your credit cards. Always be on time with your payments. Never try and skip out or do a late fee payment. And that is the reason why Best Buy has given me almost $10,000 in credit to use because I'm always on time and I know they see I know how to manage my credit. Don't open up a whole bunch of credit cards. Don't make the mistake if you see something new. I would say three maximum. I literally started with $300 on my first credit card. That card is now at $5,000. With my Best Buy card, I started at $500. Two, three years later, $7,000. And I started from five. It goes to show you, if you know how to manage your credit, they will give you the increase. Save your money. If you're a very social person and you like to go out, you're going to struggle. But you want to dial back in the areas that you don't need to be spending heaps and mounds of money. I never buy new clothes. The only time I buy new clothes is when I'm going uh, traveling or when I get my income tax check, my refund check. I don't buy Jordans, I don't buy sneakers, I don't. I barely buy Vans. I go and buy the H&M Vans ripoffs because they're only $20. And the thing is when you dial back in these areas and you stop spending money in these areas, you save money to put in your savings to be able to buy a new keyboard or a new drum pad or just those things. So. If you're very social or you like to go out and do things that require spending money, your social life will have to suffer a little bit, but that's what happens when you love music so much. You have to sacrifice those things. I literally, I don't have friends. It might take some control. It might take some discipline, like a, a long time for you to get used to this life, like to stop spending on new clothes, to stop buying food, to stop going out all the time. Uh, one time I was doing this, and I saved up about $10,000 in six months. Some people don't even save that in their lifetime, but it's because I starved myself of a social life and of clothes and of food. No, okay, I didn't starve myself of food because that's there's a reason why I weigh 186 pounds right now. But yeah, these things are very important, man. And I just wanted to communicate that. This is something that I don't think a lot of people talk about. Now here's where my little secrets come into play because there are a few secrets that I have applied to my financing that has helped me to remain afloat and stay self-employed for three years with no job surviving only off of YouTube and music. One thing that will really help you is when you do go to invest into your music and buy new equipment. Don't go to the stores and buy the brand new stuff. Take a look on eBay, take a look on Craigslist, take a look on OfferUp, LetGo, Mercari, Facebook Marketplace. Even if you have to go to a store, like I did, I bought this iPad Pro. It was an open box iPad. That's why I got $300 off. You can buy great stuff at a cheap price. You just gotta look for it. You gotta have the patience. And then of course, um, if you can't find a job, because I know everybody has different situations where they live and you know all the markets are different, incomes are different in different places. I totally understand that. Just do whatever you can to grind and get that money because there's ways in every single country, no matter where you live, to make money. Even if it's not a conventional job, even if it's not a desirable job, if you gotta be a janitor somewhere and clean up somebody's poop, I mean, if you want this bad enough, I went my first job, I had to clean up dirty tampons with popcorn inside of it and people's dirty underwear in the toilet. I had to clean that stuff up myself. I had to do this every single Tuesday and Thursday, but I wanted the money so bad, I just went and did it. When you have something that you wanna achieve, you have to go after it. Delivery jobs, there's driver jobs, there's Grubhub, Uber Eats. It's just a matter of, do you have the drive to put yourself out there and get the clients and get that income, you know? Go out, get your bag, man. Don't make excuses. I think that's the thing that everybody struggles with. They make excuses, they say, I don't have this, I don't have that. Well, guess what? At some point in time, I didn't have anything. I didn't have any of those things. Right after high school, when I graduated, I didn't have anything. And the first computer that I ever bought was a $150 PowerBook G4, and the screen went out the next day after, after I bought it. And I had to sell it and then buy an iBook. You see, I started from there, and then I built it, and I built it, and I built it, and I built it, and I saved up, and I built it, and now I have the setup that I have now. And I can make the music that I can make now. So it's all about what you put into it, man, and what you believe you can do yourself. I think I've done enough talking. I'm, I'm sorry, guys. I gotta return this stuff. I guess that's it, guys. As always, stay legendary. If you like this video, leave a like, and I'll catch you next time.